Oh yeah, it's that time of year again. Hey, it's Pete, GCI Turf. Hope you're doing good. Man, it ain't nothing like flowers in a landscape. I absolutely love them. The reason I love them is because I get to change them out twice a year. See, there's two sets of flowers or two, two different groups of flowers. You got summer flowers, you got fall flowers. Fall flowers you would plant in the fall. They're gonna last all the way up until about now, which we're about mid-May roughly. Uh, maybe a little bit before then, depending on where you're at in the country. But what makes the fall flowers go kablooey is the heat. They can't take the heat. You plant them in the fall, they survive through the winter. Okay, those are things like pansies, viola, cardoon, ornamental cabbage, ornamental kale, things like that. Well, then you've got a second group of flowers. They're your summer flowers. We'll plant those now, going into summer, They'll last all the way up until the first frost. When the frost hits them, whoop, they're gone. Now, the options are absolutely endless with summer flowers. There's thousands of them. I have a, <laughs> I've got a very few uh, examples here. It's, it's just, there's so many different uh, options that you can pick from with your summer flowers. So hey, Get out there to your nursery, find you some really pretty summer flowers, and get out there and get them planted. So a couple of things you want to consider is where you're planting them, okay? That's a big deal, because the flowers are a lot like turf grass. You know, some of them require full sun, some of them require shade, some of them can have a little bit of both. So uh, I got a couple of different examples here these two beds out here at the end of the driveway they're basically full sun all day long so i've got some lantana and some angelonia right here uh, that we're going to stick in the beds out here at the end of the road now my two beds on either side of the sidewalk they're more of a part sun part shade now they get all morning sun right here and as the sun begins to wrap around to the front of the house this entire area become shaded so that that the afternoon or the the hot hot part of the day sun these do not see that so i chose some big old begonias and i've got some uh i've got some cone coleus i'm gonna stick in there and then i've also got uh three elephant ear uh that are going to go in here as well uh i i left them at the nursery so I gotta go back Monday and pick those up. So now back here, this is gonna be the most shade. Uh, this is the north side of the house, so the sun uh, hits it just in the morning time. You can see we're about, uh, uh, it's about 11 a.m. now, and you can see the sun is just about to leave this area, and then it's gonna get shaded by the house the entire rest of the afternoon. So I can go with some shade type plants that's why i've got hosta back here they like shade uh this is some white splash right here and these are new to me these are a dwarf variety of coleus coleus bright spark and you know uh, if you know anything about flowers you know that coleus typically gets pretty big but these are not supposed to get all that big they like shade or part shade so I'm gonna stick those back here and see what happens. And I've got some more hosta. Um, gonna kind of fill in some naked areas right here. And I may even uh, uh, bring this hosta all the way out because the hosta is more of a permanent plant, okay? It, it's gonna come back year after year. And you know, I spend a buttload of money on flowers. And I'm slowly trying to cut that back a little bit and dial in my flower bed. So I'm just gonna limit the flowers to these three uh, tiers right here. And then a little bit right here in the front, uh, but I need to get those hostas stuck in there and kind of see what it looks like first. Something I am gonna do is uh, these camellias, uh, uh, they're gone. I just, for some I just don't like them right here, to be honest with you, they're gone. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use uh, 
some of the larger annuals, the larger flowers uh, in this bed so it doesn't take as many flowers. Now what I use for this is I'm gonna use my uh, steel yard boss tiller. Uh, I've got a rake over there. I've got my drill with my little uh, drill bit on it. Got some snapshot uh, to put down for my pre-emergent because you know, weeds are a freaking nuisance. <laughs> uh, they're, they're evil. And I, I don't want to spend my entire summer pulling weeds out of my flower bed. So I hit it with a real good heavy dose of snapshot uh, to prevent more weeds from coming up. Now, let me say this. It's not going to prevent every single last weed, okay? A lot of misconceptions on pre-emergence in general. They don't prevent every single weed on the planet. There are some that they don't control. So I will still have to hand pull some of the weeds out of these flower beds, but it will be nowhere near as many. Now, I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and buy a $500 tiller and uh, a high dollar drill and drill bit. You don't have to do all that. It, it, it can be much simpler than that. When I started doing all this, I used hand tools to do it, okay? I had to grow my business and make more income, generate more cash flow before I could afford to buy nicer tools like this. So if you've got a little hand tiller, a hoe, a mattock, whatever, you can make it work with anything. Heck, when you get the, the ground loosened up, you can plant them with your hands if you want. So don't feel like you have to go out and break the bank and buy all this high dollar equipment to do the thing when you don't have to do that. I do it for a living in and out every single day, year after year. So I do, I have the nicer equipment for efficiency reasons. Okay, so typically I only till up my beds about every other year. Um, I'm one of those guys, I don't think it's completely necessary to do it year after year after year simply because I use lots of organic products. I use lots of uh, organic fertilizer, uh, soil amendments, things like humic acids, the, all that kind of thing in the flower beds as a totally completely different program than my turf grass. And so this dirt is really good. Uh, it, very rarely it is compacted. Uh, it's absolutely loaded with bait worms. Bait worms, earthworms are incredible for the dirt. Don't kill them, they're great. So I'm not gonna till this up very deep. I'm just gonna do a light tilling of it just, just because this bed hadn't been tilled up in a while. So I got it tilled up fairly good and I'm going to rake it out nice and smooth, throw a little fertilizer on it, take my drill and uh, drill out my pattern. You know, I, that's why I like using that drill is because I can pl place those things exactly the same amount of, uh, you know, the same distance apart. It's, it's, it's easier for me to create some type of a, a pattern or outline using that drill. And what I'll do is I'll do my outside line first. Okay, I'll go all the way around the outside. That way the outside edges, when these lantana grow up and be big or bigger, that they have some type of symmetry to them. Uh, I know that's maybe getting a little too deep, but I just, that's me. That's the way I'm OCD about things like that. Uh, I don't, I don't want, I don't want the, the flower bed to kind of weave in and out along this arc right here. I want the flowers to, to follow this arc and to follow this uh, edge of the concrete and follow the grass line out there. So I'll get those dug and then I'll throw some fertilizer on it and uh, stick them in the ground, plant them. Um, then I'll top dress them with a little bit of a uh, soil conditioner. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute just for aesthetic reasons and uh, this bed will be good to go. Now, one thing right quick, uh, summer flowers are gonna get big, okay? Especially things like lantana, they can get really big. 
So watch, be careful how close you plant them to your turf grass because you don't want them to get so big toward the end of the summer. They're falling out in your grass and smothering or choking out the turf. Now this particular variety of lantana is called Little Lucky and they don't get quite as big as some of your other varieties. So I do plant those a little closer than the rest of the flowers. Now the way I, this is a 1801, meaning there's 18 flowers in a flat. Of course, you've seen the 3601, the big box stores sent, uh, sell those most of the time. The flat's considerably smaller and the fly, uh, or the pot's considerably smaller. That means that the flower's considerably smaller. So I, I always get the 1801s from the nursery simply because it's a bigger flower from the start. And what I'll do is I'll, I got fairly big hands so I can do this, but I'll grab three of them in one handful and squeeze. And as I squeeze, the flower just pops right out. So I like to top dress them with soil conditioner. And basically it's just really finely ground up uh, mini nuggets, wood chips, maybe a little dirt in there, I don't know. It's all kind of stuff. But I don't like using those bigger, the fat mini nuggets because when I till up my beds, that stuff gets worked down into the ground I don't like that big chunk of wood sitting beside the root ball of that uh, flower. So I use the little soil conditioner and uh, makes for a pretty nice top dressing. It, it gives it a, it, it distinguishes between your needles and your flower beds. And I'll take a little bucket and shake it out over top of everything. And then once I do that, I'll go back and kind of lightly knock it off of my flowers. I'm ready to water. All right, so there you go. That's kind of what it looks like around here. When I get done with all my beds, you can see I got a good distinct difference. Now you can see why I tamp these pine needles around the edge, because it just gives a good distinct border, a little character, whatever you want to call it. I like the way it looks, basically. Um, as far as watering, uh, I water my annuals exactly like I water my grass, only when they need it. And what I'll do is once I get all the annuals planted, I will run these zones for about two, maybe, eh, I'll go about two hours. Uh, late one evening when it's cooler, let that water seep in. And talking about that, now you noticed I put around the outside edge, I put it much heavier than I do in the middle, simply because those plants are gonna grow up and become mature pretty quick. You're not gonna really see all that in between the flowers, so no need to waste the extra product. And plus, if I have it too thick, the water may have more trouble penetrating down. So that's why I do it a little thinner in between the plants, but I have a good thick coat around the outside edge here. And back to watering, I'll run a zone for about two hours uh, give them a good soaking, maybe two to three days in a row. And then from that point on, I'll only water when the plant tells me it wants water, when it needs water. I'm going to wait and I'm going to watch the leaves and see if the leaves kind of get a little curl to them, see if they're stressed a little bit. Or I'll come out here and stick my finger in the dirt and I will feel, physically feel of the dirt and see if it's dry. If it's dry, I'll go two or three days in a row and pump them full of water again, and then, and so on. I'll do that through the entire summer. Typically, in years past, I really only water my flower beds about every three weeks, typically. Now, I don't recommend you 
do that. I don't know where you live. I don't know how hot your climate is. I don't know anything about your dirt, your soil, your flowers, or whatever. So you can take this basic principle and apply it to your flower beds if you choose. Or you can water them how you want to water them. That's up to you. This is simply the way I do things around here, and it works. <laughs> All right, you got me. Uh, I didn't put my pre-emergent down. Typically, and I'll do this for the rest of the beds. I, I've got so much going on right now. My mind's going a million different ways, and I, I screwed up. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the pre-emergent down on top of this anyway, so it'll have a little yellow tint to it. That's fine once it rains or, or I once I water a few times, the yellow goes away. But the rest of my beds, you will want to put your pre-emergent down before you put the conditioner down. That way the pre-emergent is right on the soil. That's where we want it to be. So my last step, you notice I'll take the rake and just go around and lightly tamp the edges flat. That way everything just has a nice, neat, clean appearance to it. Okay, so this bed is going to be a little bit different than say that bed where all the those bronze leaf begonia are all the same size. I'm going to have three different uh, plants in this bed. I'm going to have the bronze leaf begonia, the uh, cone coleus, and then I've got to get my three elephant here that I forgot to pick up the other day. So I'll get all three of them. Now I like to tear it, put the smaller stuff in the front the next tallest stuff in the back and uh, in the middle tallest stuff in the back. So I'm going to have three big elephant ear and I'm going to put one in the middle and then kind of put it in the middle between the two ends so that it's, it's symmetrical. <music> There you go like subscribe tell your buddies get your flowers right